In our previous video, we saw how to create a simple application returning just a string. Of course, we will want to create more useful applications and one of the features that we want to include is returning HTML, the markup language that can be interpreted by browsers. We will see how we can simply return an HTML piece of text as we were doing in the previous video. We're going to focus now in our second example. In this case, it's going to be the example inside O2 HTML inside view module. The first thing that I want to show you is how I can just uncomment this line, comment this one, save the file, and Flask will restart the web development server without me taking care of. So I will just reload this page and the application will be entirely reloaded. This is pretty neat. So let's focus now in the actual file that we need to tune. In this case, it's the O2 HTML inside view module. The first thing we see here is that we are just leveraging on the powers flask of returning simple strings to create a more complex HTML string. So basically what happens here is that flask let us return strings which are just returned back to the client. Nothing is stopping us from returning a piece of HTML code. So as we can create a simple piece of HTML and returning from our function, we want to create a more complex application. What we want to do is from a list of authors that we received from our database, we want to show them in our web page. So I'm showing you first how the HTML is going to be structured, how it looks like, so you can just open the simple, this simple web page and see it by yourself. The next step that we want to do is remove this hard-coded HTML piece and construct a new one using Python. We will combine the authors in this list with the uh, string that we originally have and we will finally return all that HTML code back to our client. We will have to do some advanced string processing to do this task and this is what I, we want to show you. We want to show you how difficult it is to manage strings in Python by itself and how templates, the subject of the next lessons, is going to simplify it for ourselves. So the first thing that I'm doing is I am creating this very same list of authors with just a Python piece of code that combines the author's return from this list. All right, so this code that you see right here is going to create something similar to what we have right here. I have just included these simple print statements so we can see uh, like a console debugging log to see what the actual author's list string contains. So I am not using this author's list yet. I'm still using the hard-coded list, but I want to just show you how does the author list was created. I will just reload this page and you will see right here in the console how the author's list is created. Of course, we are missing a few line, new lines, uh, but the content is going to be the same. So our next step is going to be, be to replace this hard-coded list by our new dynamically created list. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to remove this hard-coded list. I'm going to create a new formatting placeholder. I'm going to call it just author's list. And before returning the HTML, I'm just going to plug the author's list variable to this author's list placeholder. I will also, I could change, for example, the the name so it's not so confusing. I could use ul here and here I could use ul so you see uh, by yourself how it works. If you're not familiar with Python strings and formatting and all that, please take a look at our advanced Python course uh, because we have more de de details about Unicode strings and all that. So I'm just going to save this script and I'm going to go back to our page. I will reload the page and I will see how the, the list is basically the same one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a new author here. So I could do something like 
and I will just save this script and reload the page and you will see how the latest author was included so I could for example remove these two authors and the page is dynamically generated if I check the source code of this page I will see the HTML that I generated manually with this piece of Python code. So in this case, we have done everything that we needed to create a full-fledged web application. We are just returning uh, an HTML code which is dynamically created. So supposing that this list of authors is read from a database, we kind of have everything that we need. But of course, this is pretty annoying. Having to manage manually strings is a task that is, doesn't scale. So we will see in the following videos how to create templates and how to leverage on the Flask template engine to create better solutions. Thank you and see you in the next one.